in this video, you can learn four different types of welding. Welding is a fabrication process that uses high temperatures to melt and fuse parts together. However, it should be noted that pressure can also be used to aid the process or be used exclusively to produce a weld. The process of welding doesn't merely bond the two pieces together, as in brazing and soldering, instead, it causes the metallic structures of the two pieces to join together and become one through the use of extreme heat and sometimes the addition of other metals or gases. Welding usually also involves the use of something called a filler material or a consumable. This, as the name suggests, is used to provide a filler or pool of molten material that helps facilitate the formation of a strong link between the base metals. There are many types of welding processes, but the four most common welding processes are number one, MIG welding, number two, TIG welding, number three, stick welding, number four, flux cord arc welding. Some of the reasons they're so dominant, industrial demands, affordability for D craftsmen. With TIG welding, very high quality is key. Easy to learn, except TIG. They're all arc welding processes, meaning the workpiece, the grounding clamp, and the electrode complete an electrical circuit when the electrode makes contact. Lifting creates an arc. This arc of electricity reaches thousands of degrees, melting the metal and causing separate pieces to flow together. The electrode uses a filler metal that melts and fills the gap, becoming part of the single piece of metal. Thousands of degrees of surface heat generate chemical reactions with air and substances like oil or rust. Oxygen and nitrogen cause brittleness, rusting, porosity, and possible failure. Each process shields the molten weld puddle from air and surface contaminants by flooding the arc region with inert gases, which don't react to other chemicals. Finished welds are much stronger, more consistent, and much cleaner without contacting the air while reaching fusion. Number 1. Gas Metal Arc Welding, MIG Welding. MIG welding machines are some of the best around for most types of welding purposes, whether at home or in a factory. They tend to be able to handle various metals including mild steel, stainless steel, and even aluminum. MIG welding is an arc welding process where a continuous solid wire electrode is fed through a welding gun into the weld pool, joining the two base materials together. A shielding gas sent through the welding gun protects the weld pool from contamination. MIG welding is usually pretty fast and provides a long arc time, even when the electrodes are not fully charged. Thyristor-type MIG welding machines are generally best for fixing objects or mounting them on a suitable surface. These machines tend to be of good quality and will last a very long time. Such welding machines produce a small amount of spark, which makes them easy to control. These machines are best suited for welding solid core and flux materials. They can handle mild steel, low-carbon steel, alloy steel, etc. Number 2. Gas Tungsten Arc Welding, TIG Welding. TIG is a difficult process to master. It takes more knowledge, dexterity, time, and experience than other processes, but pays off with better, more beautiful, and stronger welds. The main way TIG differs from other processes is its electrode. The electrode in the torch is a short tungsten rod, sharpened to a point. The difference is that the electrode isn't consumed. Instead, while working the torch with one hand, the operator feeds a long rod made of filler metal into the weld puddle. This metal rod is consumed by the weld puddle. The electrode only strikes and maintains the arc to melt the metal as a flame torch would. Favorable results depend greatly on the operator to handle the torch well, control the heat level and feed the filler rod at just the right speed. Like a MIG setup, but with no wire feeding mechanism, the TIG torch connection carries pressurized inert gas to flood the arc region. The usual shielding gas for TIG welding is argon. TIG welding is used in places where strong, and clean welds are needed. Some structures made by TIG welding are covered once built and can't be maintained easily. Aircraft frames, electric devices, high-end electronics cabinetry, and race car roll cages are some examples. Another case for TIG is the opposite situation, where the weld is always visible and requires a certain level of eye appeal or high-tech validation. Exposed hot rod frames, custom bodywork, or designer lawn furniture are some instances. Number 3. Shielded metal arc welding, stick welding. Stick welding came first, and it's the simplest concept. People have been stick welding since the late 1800s. It has the oldest, simplest, and most proven technology. A stick welder has a power source and big cable leads with an electrode holder on one lead and a heavy clamp for the workpiece on the other. The electrode is a metal rod, like a piece of thick wire. They come in different metals and alloys. 
the diameter of the welding rod varies. It's selected according to the thickness of the metal. Welding rods are covered with a thick coating of a material called flux that burns in the arc, generating a gas to shield the welding puddle. As the metal cools, the flux forms a thin brittle crust called slag that must be chipped off and brushed away. If it can be welded at all, it's welded by stick. Stick arc is preferred when it's hard to reach the weld, or there's rust, oil, and other contaminants at the weld joint. It works well on steel, cast iron, aluminum, stainless, and hard surfacing on farm equipment. Number 4. Flux cord arc welding. Flux core welding, also known as gasless MIG welding, is a highly versatile process known for low cost, easy learning, and strong results. It's also used in manufacturing, but with shielding changes and bigger machines. Like how the stick process has an electrode coated in flux, the FCAW process uses a hollow wire filled with flux. FCAW feeds a spool of wire through the welding lead as MIG does. You can weld faster than stick welders because the only time you change the electrode is when the wire spool runs out. There are two flavors of flux core welding in main use. The S means self-shielded, and it's the most common flux core technique because it's inexpensive, simple, and effective in a breeze. Also known as dual shielded wire welding, the G means that an external shielding gas is used in addition to the standard flux core wire. This approach provides a smoother, more controllable arc than FCAWS and MIG processes. Most commonly, flux core welding is seen among hobbyists, small businesses, and fabrication shops because it provides great penetration, heat control, and ease of use at an inexpensive cost compared to MIG welding. What is the best welder for a beginner? If you are new to the world of welding, some techniques are much easier to pick up than others. MIG welding, for example, is widely considered to be the easiest to pick up and run with. But why? MIG welding has a high adjustability of power output. It also produces very clean welds compared to most other techniques. It is also great as it is usually pretty quick, a feature loved by beginners and masters alike. Other techniques also exist, if your budget allows. You could consider getting yourself something called a hybrid welder. This lets you try multiple techniques with one tool. Yet despite this, many practicing welders endorse the simplicity and reliability of MIG welding for learning the ropes. How do you choose the right welding gloves? Apart from a decent quality welding mask and welding machine, another essential piece of welding gear are the gloves. As their job is to protect your precious yet fragile human hands from potentially serious burns, choosing a good quality pair is absolutely essential. But there is no one-size-fits-all when it comes to welding gloves. Factors like the type of welding you'll be using them for and how much dexterity you're going to need are all considerations. The type of welding you'll be using will produce different amounts of sparks and other hazards. MIG welding, for example, tends to produce a lot of sparks that need to be shielded against and cleaned up afterward. Gloves also come in a variety of materials too. For most users, leather is the most preferred kind as it is durable, non-conductive, and is great at dissipating heat. But leather can be made from various types of animal skins. Some common examples include goat skin. This kind of leather offers unparalleled abrasion and tensile strength, while remaining soft and supple. This is ideal for TIG welding, where you need the maximum amount of dexterity possible. Horsehide. Horsehide is tough and durable, yet remains comfortable. While less popular, as leather gloves go, it is also great for TIG welding. Pigskin. Pig leather is tough and performs very well in wet and oily work environments. This kind of leather is great for TIG, MIG, and stick welding, among others. Cowhide. Cow leather is one of the most common kinds of leather. It is very durable and comfortable, and is usually preferred for stick and MIG welding. Deerskin, a soft and flexible leather, the freedom of movement it provides makes it another great choice for TIG welding. Elkskin, elk leather tends to not harden as quickly as cowhide when exposed to heat. Elkskin is another great choice for MIG welding due to the high amount of heat it gives off. What is the strongest type of weld? To answer this question is not as simple as it may first appear. The best weld depends on the base material in question and its intended use. From TIG to plasma arc welding, each technique has its own unique advantages and disadvantages over the others. According to Krom Weld, the strongest type of weld could be stick welding. If pure strength, that counts in the thickness of the material that can be welded, then stick welding is the winner. As we said, the stick method is the only one capable of welding cast iron, additionally, it also works on dirty materials and under harsh weather conditions. But that doesn't necessarily mean stick welding is the best choice for all scenarios. 
MIG can be applied to a wider selection of metals of varying thickness, while TIG welding produces the highest quality welds, especially when it comes to thin metals. It also depends on the metal you wish to weld. For example, welding aluminum can be tricky as it is a fairly soft metal that can't cope with too much heat. For this reason, there are only two viable welding techniques that can be used with aluminum, MIG welding and TIG welding. Of these two techniques, TIG welding is widely considered to be the go-to technique for best results. Stainless steel welding, on the other hand, is different, as it's a much beefier metal when compared to aluminum. For this reason, it can take a lot more punishment before compromising its strength. But, which welding technique provides the strongest weld depends on the thickness of the material. MIG welding is generally considered to be the best technique for most steel applications. When it comes to thicker steel sheets, many bow down before the superiority of stick and flux welding. If the steel is mild and stainless, TIG welding and MIG welding can be used without any real issue.